okay you are watching this video because you want to know about the dna sequencing methods and uh, the different types of dna sequencing that is going on right now so i have different videos on the dna sequencing method that is the sanger sequencing or maxim gilbert so i want i will encourage you to watch for that but this is going to be a brief overview of all the different methods of dna sequencing why they are used their advantages disadvantages and so on so let's begin with it the dna sequencing methods according to my choice i can divide into three different sections uh, start from the basic dna sequencing second one is uh, so let me start with that one is the basic dna sequencing basic dna sequencing second one is the advanced dna sequencing and the third one is the next generation dna sequencing so these are the three different types of dna sequencing we are going to talk about in this video three different types of methods so in the basic type of dna sequencing it was the earlier days dna sequencing methods uh, for example, two major type of examples are present. For example, one is uh, the Sanger method of DNA sequencing. So, Sanger method of DNA sequencing. Another one is the Maxim Gilbert DNA sequencing. Both are termed according to the scientists who discovered this method and who actually invented the method. So, uh, the Sanger sequencing method is uh, for the Fred Sanger who discovered this method actually. Uh, that is also called as the chain termination method of uh, DNA sequencing. The other name is chain termination methods. Chain termination method but better known as a Sanger sequencing. And the second one, uh, Maxim Gilbert method is also called as the chemical termination. Chemical termination or chemical cleavage method of uh, the DNA sequencing. Both of them are basic type of DNA sequencing. Why they are basic type? Because at the very beginning, uh, we don't have much access to other type of microarray system or other array based system to do it. Uh, so uh, we can actually sequence a very small stretch of nucleotides at a time. For example, for a 200 to 400 base pair sequences at a time using these techniques like Sanger or Maxim Gilbert. Plus, we require much more complicated processes for that. For example, in case of Sanger sequencing, the idea is the chain termination method. That means what we have, we have a DNA sequence. I mean, we have an unknown DNA sequence. Now, first of all, what we, I should talk about uh, is that uh, what is the DNA sequencing? You know, DNA sequencing means you have an unknown DNA. You don't know what is the sequence. Sequence means how the bases are added one after another in that DNA. Right? So that's the sequence. Once you know how one base is placed after another in the DNA, you understand the DNA sequence of that DNA. Right? So that is uh, for this. So in the basic DNA sequencing process like Sanger, we have an unknown DNA. We don't know the sequence. So what we'll do, we, we keep on adding all the nucleotides in the different wells. So four different setup is required throughout the experiment for Sanger sequencing. Where we, what we do, we actually add our desired nucleotides along with we add a nucleotide which is called dideoxynucleotides. So they are called as dideoxy DDNTPs or dideoxynucleotide sequences. So this dideoxynucleotide has a special feature of terminating the DNA elongation process or terminating the DNA polymerization process during the experiment. So if we add a DGTP, it will terminate wherever it finds a G or guanine. If we add DATP, it will terminate where it find an adenine there. So this, this type of DDNTPs will terminate specifically to a particular uh, base during the synthesis. And, and as it, using this particular technology, we can actually uh, know where exactly the bases are placed. That's the actual way of sequencing with Sanger sequencing. If you want to know detail about the Sanger sequencing, here goes the link in the description as well as I'm putting the link here in this video in the annotation. So, so click on that link, it will redirect you to the exact system of DNA uh, sequencing by Sanger method. And I'm going to make a separate video on that too, so you can find it there. Now here it is the Maxim Gilbert sequencing is called the chemical termination method. That means in Maxim Gilbert also we add certain chemical agents which will cleave the DNA during the sequencing process. That means we have the unknown DNA and what we do here, we add uh, certain chemical agents like, like for example piperidine is there, dimethyl sulfate is there. So DMS, dimethyl sulfate and piperidine. For example, if you add a dimethyl sulfate followed by piperidine, in that case it will cleave the guanine. So wherever it finds guanine, it will cleave the DNA strand from that region. So it will cleave the DNA strand, ultimately make the DNA strand shorter at the end 
before the guanine. So what it does actually, we can again able to selectively mark certain nucleotides and cleave after or before that nucleotide. Again, it can help us to know where exactly the nucleotide is placed. How exactly we do this Maxim Gilbert sequencing? To understand that, again, watch the video here in the description as well as in this uh, in this video corner uh, in this annotation. So click it here, and you, it will be redirected to the Maxim Gilbert sequencing in detail. But the thing is, in for both this basic DNA sequencing like Sanger or Maxim Gilbert DNA sequencing, in both these cases, this DNA sequencing take uh, take not they won't take a very long time, but they will they are very much uh, expensive too much expensive for example for sanger sequencing sequencing 1 million bases it will cost 1000 usd for 1 million base sequencing and what we have in human body we have billions of dna so to sequence our human genome it will take a million dollar to sequence that so it's not very much cost effective right so that is the problem with sanger sequencing as well as maxim gilbert sequencing because though they are not taking too much of time but they are hugely expensive and we will not afford that so they are also another disadvantage for these two types of sequencing is that they also can synthesize very small stretch of nucleotides so they are not very much cost effective for the large genome projects like the human genome project or any other uh, eukaryotic genome projects the second one is the advanced type of DNA sequences which uh, came later to the basic type of DNA sequencing. It is slightly advanced version of this basic DNA sequencing. Uh, actually slightly altered version and it was actually required during the synthesis of human during the going period of human genome project because we need to synthesize a long stretch of human genome and these two methods are not very well established. I mean not very ex cost effective then uh, to actually uh, produce the DNA sequence of human. So what we do indeed in that case actually we took the huge genome and we use and apply a knowledge for shotgun sequencing. So the example for such is shotgun sequencing. Shotgun sequencing. Uh, just like the shotgun, what we take, we take a long DNA, large DNA, and if we fragment that DNA uh, into smaller pieces, smaller part of the DNA is produced. And what we do then, we, we actually sequence each of those small part independently, say 200 to 400 base pair independently using Sanger method of DNA sequencing. And then once we get the sequence, we simply use it to over to find out the overlapping regions between that, and then finally to get the ultimate DNA sequence. Uh, unknown sequence in our hand. So that's how it, it's actually done. We, we use a shotgun method to feel, we actually use the phys physical method to shear the DNA from different places randomly. We don't have any intentional uh, uh, part for that. And then after creating smaller fragments and we use these methods of Sanger and Maxim Gilbert to produce more and more uh, copies of that and, and, and to actually understand the, the sequence of that. Once we get the sequence, you overlap those sequence to find out the actual DNA sequence. That's how the advanced DNA sequencing called shotgun sequencing work and the shotgun sequencing found to be very much effective in uh, those human genome project that we have already done. Now, after this type of method of human genome project, people started to know that human genome uh, understanding is very much important. So, if you know your DNA sequence, you know everything because that's the blueprint of our body, of everything that we, from what we eat, from what we talk, how we behave, everything is written there. So, if you know your own DNA sequence, you know everything about yourself. So for that, it was a, it was a kind of a revolution. I mean, I mean, it's a resolution for. Uh, for all the scientists uh, that and, and genomists that we need to produce some very cost effective method to synthesize the human DNA so that other people, common people can do it. And the idea was to, to make a thousand dollar sequencing project. That means uh, it should not cost more than thousand dollar to sequence every single gene of your body. So it's kind of very much cost effective because you know uh, it is a thousand USD for your every genome sequencing compared to what we begin here thousand for one million basis is a huge improvement and for this improvement to occur we need to have a set of technology and also research going on still now it is not completely figured out but it is going on and hopefully in, in very near future we are going to complete that thing and we are going to get uh, our genome sequenced in 1000 USD only. Now in this case for that reason we need to have next generation sequencing technologies. Sequencers that will give us result very rapidly. It can analyze a huge stretch of DNA sequence at the same time without being complicated, without being I mean, forgetting because you know for human uh, this level for Sanger and Maxim Gilbert level human can analyze the result, can see the result 200 to 400 base 
taxpayer not that difficult but if you are dealing with with a 2 million basis or 5 billion basis human cannot do that we need computer to analyze all this result for us and that's what is going on in next generation sequencing even if there are two generations division in the next generation sequencing first generation and second generation now we are belonging to the second generation next generation sequencing and this next generation sequencing what we have two different there are many examples of that i have uh, i'll talk about the solid solid sequencing and another one is the illumina illumina sequencing in both the sequencing are very good very very good so uh, so in both these cases solid sequencing and illumina sequencing are slightly so solid sequencing is again in both this type of sequencing methods like next generation sequencing they follow a rule or, or another one uh, let's say the pyro sequencing that's also there pyro sequencing these are the sequencing methods so if you look at here the pyro sequencing method and the illumina sequencing method works slightly differently for example pyro sequencing uses a fluorescently tagged dye which will help you to understand if a new nucleotide incorporated during the synthesis so it follows the polymerization of uh, of your unknown genome so if you use the unknown genome as a template and start polymerizing things during the polymerization incorporation of a nucleotide uh, will give the fluorescence and that fluorescence is detected and by that fluorescence indication that the fluorescence uh, signal is kind of directly proportional to the number of nucleotides added and which nucleotide is added so that is the pyro sequencing method and the illumina sequencing method is called the bridge sequencing method because in illumina sequencing what we have we have a, a slide and well like structures like that and we have different whales out there traps out there and what we add here we add Oh, yeah, different types of, I mean, uh, we had all those, there are different kinds of, you know, oligos are added, oligonucleotides are already implanted in that in those wells and what happens actually we produces the sequence the, the unknown region to be sequenced we add some adapter molecules both the end and that adapter is having a complementary structure with the oligos so adapter will bind with the oligos along with the unknown genus uh, dna sequence for example let's say the blue color sequence is the unknown one here so that's how it is uh, it was actually done and then what we have we can see oligos are uh, implanted there and our adapters are added in both the ends and what it can actually do is that this DNA can bend over and it can actually attach with this nearby it can actually attach with the nearby oligo because all the oligos are the same so what it form actually it can form a structure like this like this bridge so bridge structures start to form and this way it can amplify a particular unknown DNA a, a huge number of times and this is called the bridge. So this is a sequencing method for Illumina which sequences a large amount of DNA in a very small tiny slide just like very easily but the thing is for illumina sequencing it took a very long time for example one to two week is taken for sequencing uh, those complete human genome for uh, for for one million basis if we consider it will take one uh, to two weeks to give us a sequence but still this process is good because it is cost effective where uh, the sequencing cost for using the sanger method was a uh, thousand usd for one million basis the same thing for uh, the Illumina sequencing is 0 0.05 to 0 0.15 per 1 million basis. So you can see how many fold the cost is going down using Illumina sequencing. But the thing is the machine, the Illumina sequencer costs very, very high, very expensive cost. So the starting cost is very high, but once we have that, then the, the maintenance cost and all the other costs goes very down. Similarly, uh, pyro sequencing costs slightly more than this Illumina sequencing. Solid sequencing costs slightly more and uh, it, solid sequencing also costs like 0 0.5 to 0 0.20, something like that for 1 million basis. But the thing is for the solid sequencing, it is much more accurate than Illumina. Uh, solid sequencing is 99.9% .9 accuracy, but Illumina sequencing is having the accuracy level of 98%. Sanger sequencing accuracy level is 99.99%. So it's a very much accurate sequencing process was there. Okay, so this in a sense uh, give you the idea of different methods that we use nowadays to sequence our DNA and how they cost and why we are coming down to the next generation sequencing because we require cost effective 
uh, genome sequencing for human genome synthesis so that's how it's actually going on so if you want to know I, I know that uh, this video won't, won't help you to understand the solid sequencing on Illumina or pyro sequencing none of that but I have separate videos on all of this so if you want to watch pyro sequencing just click here the link is given in the description to watch and understand the pyro sequencing animation I prepared animation for you second is uh, the Sanger sequencing I have two videos on Sanger sequencing one animation another one is the dis descriptive video you can watch that too here in the description as well as hopefully I can put it into the uh, annotation here and then we have a maximum Gilbert sequencing again the link is given so if you want to know detail about individual sequencing methods click on those links and you'll be redirected hopefully I put all the links finally once again here uh, click any of these links and you'll be redirected to uh, the actual video that you want to know and learn and hopefully you like the video if you like this video please for not do not forget to subscribe please do subscribe because your subscription help us to grow uh, and all the rest thank you